Hey, Mom. Dad is saying something. Lucas said this while staring at Ryan's portrait. Of course, the Ryan in the portrait remained still, not moving at all. Lucas's spiritual sensitivity must have kicked in again. Lucas, stop it. Come over here and play with Mom. Okay. But, you know, Dad is really angry. He's saying, it was her who pushed me into the road. When Lucas pointed to the person, we couldn't believe our eyes. My name is Catherine. I'm a homemaker in my 60s. Right now, I live with my husband, David, in the penthouse of a luxury high-rise condo. I love the view from this place while enjoying freshly brewed coffee and some sweets. The sunlight comes in beautifully in the morning, and at night, the view of the city lights is stunning. Honestly, I never thought we'd be able to live like this. I'm really grateful to you. This is the kind of moment where you'd expect to be sipping champagne and nibbling on cheese while gazing at the night view. But for us, coffee and some sweets just feel right. We haven't always lived this dream like life. It's only recently that we've been able to enjoy this lifestyle. My husband, David, is now the CEO of a major corporation. But the road to get here was anything but smooth. We got married in our 20s, but neither of us came from wealthy families, so we had no choice but to make our own way financially. David worked late every night, and I took on part-time work cleaning offices while raising our child to make ends meet. I'm sorry for all the hardship. I promise that one day I'll make things easier for us. So let's keep going. Don't worry. I'm here to support you. Let's do this together. Even during those tough times, we lived with consideration for each other. One of our little indulgences during those hard days was to occasionally buy some sweets and share them. All that hard work paid off eight years ago. David, who always had a knack for his work, was promoted to the board of directors after years of dedication. After that, he left the company, fulfilled his dream of starting his own business, and eventually became the CEO. He's still busy with work, but he makes sure to take weekends off and we spend quality time together. Our relationship is going strong. Lately, David has been talking about finding a successor. Considering his age, he's been thinking about passing the company on to our only son, Ryan, in the future. Then one day, as I was doing the dishes, I heard a ringtone from my phone behind me. I quickly wiped my hands and picked up the phone to see Ryan's name on the screen. Hello. Hey, Mom, it's been a while. How've you been? I'm doing well, thank you. It's rare for you to call. After I said that, Ryan started speaking with a slightly embarrassed tone. Actually, there's someone I want to marry. Can I bring her over to meet you? My little Ryan had grown up and was about to start his own family. It was such wonderful news, and I felt a sense of relief. Congratulations, of course, you can, I'm looking forward to it. The day Ryan was going to bring his fiancée over. I was so nervous that I couldn't sit still. What should I wear? Does she drink coffee or maybe tea? Seeing me in that state, David smiled and said, Relax. 
As I was bustling around getting everything ready, the doorbell rang. We're here. A few moments later, Ryan and his fiancé walked into the house. Nice to meet you. I'm Emily. I brought a little something for you. Emily said this as she carefully handed us a paper bag filled with sweets from a well-known shop. Oh my, thank you so much, let's all enjoy them together, if we're having sweets, coffee would be perfect. I said to myself, as I prepared the coffee. Emily had a graceful and refined demeanor, her way of speaking and choice of words also reflected her elegance. It seemed that she worked for a major corporation and she planned to continue working after marriage so that the financial burden wouldn't fall solely on Ryan. Ryan, she's such a wonderful person. You're a lucky guy. Oh, please, stop kidding me, David. Mom, Dad, next time, you've got to meet Emily's family too. Of course, Emily, have a good life with our son. We congratulated Ryan and Emily on their engagement with big smiles, and they looked incredibly happy. From that point on, everything moved along smoothly, from meeting both families to planning the wedding. Emily's family consisted of her parents and her younger sister, Christy. As I initially thought, Emily came from a refined and well-grounded family. I heard that Emily's parents had been running a business for many years. Christy, her sister, was also a career woman, just as accomplished as Emily. Emily, I'm so glad you found such a great guy. I hope I can have a happy family too someday. But for now, work is my boyfriend. Emily's family was very easy to talk to, and I felt like we were going to become one big happy family. Following Emily's parents' desire to throw a grand celebration for their eldest daughter's once-in-a-lifetime event, the wedding was attended by 300 guests. Although the cost was a bit daunting, we agreed with Emily's parents as we also wanted to celebrate Ryan. Surrounded by many relatives and friends, Ryan and Emily's faces were filled with joy. Now that I'm a mother-in-law thanks to Emily, I can't wait to become a grandmother. Mom, the wedding just ended. It's too soon for that. I couldn't help but daydream about the grandchild we might have one day. Two years later, Ryan and Emily were blessed with a child, a boy named Lucas. He was our first grandchild and absolutely adorable. Lucas, it's Grandpa. Lucas, it's your Aunt Christy, not an old lady. Lucas was like the star of the family, brightening up the room just by being there. During holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas, Ryan and Emily would often bring Lucas to visit both her family and ours. Spending time with Lucas, playing with him, and having meals together became my greatest joy. Surrounded by warmth and love, Lucas grew up well. But when Lucas turned three, things started to change. One day, Lucas suddenly said, Why did you leave? Why are you going away? Lucas, no one's there. Come back over here. I gently pulled Lucas back as he walked towards the empty balcony talking to someone who wasn't there. What could this be? Puzzled, I asked Emily. Hey, has this ever happened before, you know, where he seems to be talking to someone invisible? 
Yes, it's been happening more often lately. I was worried and took him to see the doctors, but they said nothing was wrong. They say that even kids can have strong spiritual sensitivity, which can cause behavior like this. We'll just have to keep an eye on him. Lucas was so precious to me. But this strange behavior left me with an uneasy feeling in my chest. Unaware that Lucas's mysterious ability would later trigger a certain incident. Some time passed, and then one day... Catherine, something terrible has happened. My husband shook me awake in the middle of the night, and I groggily sat up. What is it? What's wrong, waking me up at this hour? Emily just called. Ryan was in a car accident, and he's in critical condition. What? Everything after that is a blur. Before I knew it, I was at the hospital, rushing to Ryan's room. But Ryan had already passed away. Ryan? Don't leave me and Lucas behind. Please. My husband and I stood there, stunned unable to process what was happening. Emily was holding Lucas and crying as she clutched Ryan's hand. It wasn't until later that the crushing reality hit me and an overwhelming sorrow took hold of me. This can't be real. Ryan, please open your eyes, Ryan. I cried until I had no tears left held in my husband's arms. I had never seen him cry out loud like that before. Afterward, I couldn't bring myself to do anything, and I stayed holed up at home. At first, everyone around me was also consumed by grief, struggling to eat or sleep. We were just sad. But time has a way of healing, and slowly, those around us began to recover. But inside me, there was still a gaping hole. My husband tried to get me to go for walks to clear my mind, and Emily and Lucas would come by to check on me, but I couldn't move forward. Time just kept passing me by, leaving me behind. And before I knew it, it was already the one-year memorial for Ryan. Time flies so fast, it feels like just a moment ago, Ryan was here, looking so happy. After the memorial service, I finally had a chance to talk with Emily's parents and Christy, whom I hadn't seen in a while. Losing such a wonderful young man must have been incredibly painful but I'm sure he's watching over us from above. That's probably true. He was always such a bright child. If there's anything we can do, please don't hesitate to let us know. Thank you, but I know Emily is the one suffering the most. Emily glanced at Ryan's portrait. Thanks. Indeed, the time I spent with Ryan and Lucas was truly joyful. Ryan was the kind of person who hugged us every day. He really was a wonderful man. You're so lucky, Emily. It was the first time since the wedding that everyone was laughing together. The calm atmosphere was starting to ease my heart when Lucas suddenly began to act strangely. He stared intently at Ryan's portrait, then looked around nervously, unable to settle down. Uh, uh. Lucas was mumbling something to himself. Lucas. Hey, Mom. Dad is saying something. Lucas said this while staring at Ryan's portrait. Of course. The Ryan in the portrait remained still, not moving at all. 
it must have been Lucas's spiritual sensitivity acting up again. I didn't think much of it. Lucas, stop it. Come over here and play with mom. Okay. But, you know, dad is really angry. Angry, Ryan, Lucas, what is dad angry about? Then Lucas suddenly stood up and walked toward someone. The next words out of his mouth were unbelievable. He says it was her who pushed him into the road. When Lucas pointed at the person, we couldn't believe our eyes. What? It was Emily's sister, Christy. Hey, cut it out, Lucas. What are you talking about? Come on, let's go play over there. No, I won't go. Dad said I shouldn't go near Aunt Christy. He said she's the one who did it to him. Lucas spoke firmly, with a strength in his voice that caught everyone off guard. The once peaceful atmosphere suddenly became tense as everyone's eyes turned to Christy. Christy, what is this about? Stop it, Lucas. Enough with the jokes. You shouldn't say things like that. Everyone, please don't believe him, okay? I'm not feeling well, so I'm leaving. Unable to bear the situation, Christy quickly ran out of the room. Wait, Christy. What's going on? Not understanding what was happening, everyone followed after her. We spent hours searching for Christy, but she was nowhere to be found. We checked the nearby park, the area around her home, and called her phone multiple times, but she didn't answer. As evening approached, we noticed a small crowd gathered near the river bank. Through the crowd, we saw Christy. Stop it. Let go of me. When we finally found her and rushed over, we saw several police officers surrounding her. As we approached, one of the officers noticed us and quickly walked over. Excuse me, that's my sister. What's going on here? Christy is being arrested on suspicion of murder. What? It turns out that there were several suspicious points surrounding Ryan's car accident, and the police had been investigating it ever since. There were very few witnesses since it happened late at night, but inconsistencies between the driver's statement and the dash cam footage raised concerns. The police had been quietly investigating Ryan's accident as a potential crime, and now, at this moment, Christy was being arrested as the prime suspect. It seems the police had been keeping an eye on her for some time. I didn't do it. Let me go. Christy's parents could only watch helplessly as she was taken away, struggling against the officers. Watching Christy being taken away, we all stood there in disbelief, as if we were caught in a bad dream. After Christy's arrest, our spirits were completely drained. Ryan's accidental death, followed by Christie's arrest, it was no wonder we were exhausted after such a string of events in just one year. But why was Christie, a member of our own family, the culprit? During questioning, Christie reportedly said, When my sister first introduced me to Ryan, I thought, I want him for myself. I kept telling Ryan to date me instead of her, but he never even glanced my way. So, I wanted him gone. It was an act driven by Christie's jealousy towards Emily, a selfish and cruel crime. Learning this, Emily was utterly devastated, her mental state taking a severe toll. 
She had lost her husband to her own sister, who was now in police custody. Christy remained silent after that, and while it was clear her actions were selfish, many details of the incident remained unknown as time went on. Both families were shrouded in a dark cloud, but we had to keep living, facing forward. Over time, everyone stopped talking about the incident. One day, as my husband and I were relaxing in the living room, he broke the silence. You and I are both nearing our 70s. I always wanted Ryan to take over for me, but now... I think it's time to pass the company on to the next generation. Let's spend the rest of our days living quietly together. What do you think? You're still full of energy, but with everything that's happened, maybe a quieter life wouldn't be so bad. Though he had kept up a brave front, my husband was undoubtedly tired inside. After discussing it together, he decided to step down from his position and entrust the company to a new successor. A year later. David, I'll do my best starting today. Emily, I'm counting on you. Yes. The position of CEO had been passed on to Emily. And with that, we decided to start living together as a family of four my husband, Emily, Lucas, and I. Catherine, I really appreciate you looking after Lucas. It's no problem. I'm sure work is going to be tough for you now, Emily. We're happy to spend time with Lucas, so please lean on us. Thank you so much. After Ryan's death and Christie's arrest, Emily was plagued with guilt and constantly expressed her desire to help us in any way she could. So when she heard about my husband's retirement, she volunteered herself as the next CEO. There was some opposition from the company, but with my husband's strong recommendation, Emily was chosen. Emily threw herself into her work every day while my husband and I took care of Lucas. It was like a second round of parenting for us. Grandpa, Grandma, we have a sports day at school soon, so you have to come watch. Oh, really? Then I'll make sure to pack all your favorite foods for lunch to cheer you on. Yeah, make sure to include an omelette. Oh, and there's a dance, too. I wonder if I'll dance well? Those moments of conversation were filled with happiness. Emily worked diligently as the new CEO, and my husband finally felt at peace, saying, leaving the company in Emily's hands was the right choice. Now I can truly retire. The company was stable, and my husband was finally able to rest his mind. But that happiness didn't last long. Emily started coming home late every night, and even on weekends, she was always out, so we hardly saw her anymore. There were times when I asked her to stay home more often, but Emily would always refuse. I'm sorry, but I have a meeting with a client, so I'll be late. I'm going on a business trip, so please take care of Lucas for the next three days. She would leave Lucas with us and not think twice about it. There were even more nights when she came home drunk. Emily, you're drinking too much. This is every night now. You need to be more careful. Oh, come on. I was entertaining clients. It's part of the job. She slurred her words, clearly intoxicated. My husband and I would exchange looks and sigh in frustration. Then one day, when the company was on a break, 
We were in the living room, and Lucas started muttering something strange again. Dad, don't be mad. Don't be mad at Mom. Lucas was holding his ears, his face twisted in discomfort. Lucas, are you hearing Ryan's voice again? Yeah, Dad's really angry, but I can't understand what he's saying. Maybe he's mad at Mom for coming home drunk every night. No, it's not that. Dad's scary. Ryan was angry. Something bad might be happening again. Feeling a deep sense of unease, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong with Emily lately. Following my intuition, I contacted a private investigator and asked them to look into Emily. They investigated everything. Emily's actions after leaving the house, her supposed business trips, and the restaurants where she had meetings. A week later, a report from the investigator arrived. The results were shocking. Emily wasn't doing her job as CEO properly. Instead, she was embezzling company funds and spending wildly on men. She would book luxury hotels with men under the guise of business trips and charge everything to the company's credit card. She was also splurging on designer goods. At night, she would go from one host club to another, spending enormous amounts of money. And that wasn't all. Emily was also sending the company's money to her parents, allowing them to live lavishly. Her parents, who were supposed to be running a business, had actually abandoned it after Emily became CEO. With the money Emily provided, they bought a new house, a new car, and were living in luxury. We had rarely visited Emily's parents, so we have no idea this was happening. It seemed that Lucas's maturings were reflecting the truth. I quickly called Emily over. I have a meeting today, so can we make this quick? Without a word, I handed her the investigation report. Take a look at this, what on earth were you thinking? Oh, so I've been caught. Fine, I'll tell you everything. Emily admitted the truth without hesitation, wearing a sinister grin I had never seen before as she continued speaking. I married Ryan for the money. I knew he was a candidate for CEO. But Ryan was so laid back that it seemed like he'd never actually become the CEO. So I figured it would be faster if I became the CEO myself. Emily continued, saying something even more unbelievable. Oh, and I was the one who told Christy what to do. I never expected her to get caught, though. Christy tried to cover for me by saying she acted alone, but this is the real truth. My anger reached its boiling point. What do you think Ryan was to you? This is despicable. Because of you, Ryan is dead. The real despicable ones are you people. Flaunting your wealth and privileged lives. I grew up poor, so I deserve to enjoy myself for once. And my parents are happy too. Emily showed no remorse, and my anger only grew stronger. Your whole family is unbelievably selfish. To kill Ryan just to satisfy your greed. You're not even human. We've been left with scars in our hearts. Hmph, only fools get tricked. I had no idea you were this bad. Ryan deserved so much better. Emily, as of today, you're no longer part of this family. You'll also be removed from the CEO position. I'll inform the company myself. Get out now, I'm calling the police, never come back here again.
You'll pay for your crimes. Emily laughed maniacally the entire time as my husband and I handed this vile woman over to the police. It wasn't long before the police arrived and Emily was arrested. Her parents were also arrested for receiving stolen money from the company. Our family had been caught in a trap set by Emily's family, losing both our son and the company's money. And Lucas lost both his parents. He watched as his mother was taken away by the police. Seeing Lucas like that, my husband and I vowed to protect him no matter what. A few years later, Lucas has grown into a kind and gentle boy, showing no signs of the tragedies that once surrounded him. Grandpa, Grandma, let's take a picture over there. Sure, how about under that tree? It looks lovely. Today is Lucas's middle school entrance ceremony. My husband and I have become his legal guardians, and the three of us now live peacefully together. And since a few years ago, Lucas's strange maturings have completely stopped. From now on, we'll walk towards a bright future with Lucas. But if anything ever happens again, I hope he'll start maturing once more, so the three of us can continue living happily together.